Hi, my name is Bubba Brooks, and today I'm going to talk to you about doing metagenomic sequencing on Singular's G4 platform. This is the G4. The G4 sequencing platform is the world's most powerful benchtop sequencer as a function of speed and throughput. It's flexible. Uh, one can load up to four flow cells at runtime, and each flow cell comprises four, four fluidically independent lanes to facilitate multiplexing. Uh, apart from flexibility, imparted by the number of flow cells that one can load, we also offer uh, two types of flow cells. There's the F2, uh, which produces uh, between 150 and 250 million reads, and the F3, uh, between 300 and 450 million reads. Aside from flexibility, the G4 is fast. It's engineered for under 24-hour uh, turnaround times for applications, putting it as an industry leader uh, for these respective applications. Uh, that's made possible by the rapid sequencing by synth synthesis chemistry uh, that we've developed here at Singular. It's powerful. A single run can produce up to 3.2 billion reads or 480 gigabytes, or get, sorry, gigabases, um, which is more data per day than any other uh, benchtop sequencer. Um, finally, it's accurate. 80 to 90 percent of the bases are above uh, Q30. Uh, and that's made possible by our novel four-color rapid sequencing by synthesis chemistry. Uh, the quality of the data means that the resulting fast cues can seamlessly fit into any existing bioinformatics workflows, um, like metagenomic profiling, which we'll talk about today. Uh, today, this very small experiment aims to address two of the many challenges in metagenomics. Uh, the first is batching-related delays. Core facilities receive a variety of samples from diverse ecosystems. Soil metagenomes often need deep sequencing to adequately profile the community and detect rare taxa, while lower richness communities like uh, extreme environments such as acid mine drainage or the developing infant gut need uh, less depth to saturate the sequencing space. This disparity on low to high depth needs, in particular on the lower end, can lead to delays in start times since core facilities often deliver samples based on depth needs. So said another way, if you only need 100 million reads for your project, you may have to wait weeks or, or months for your local core facility to collect samples from other users in order to reach uh, the flow cells capacity. This is less of an issue on the G4 uh, since you can start runs with one to four flow cells using politically independent lanes. So in this very simple experiment, uh, we sequenced a mock community of 19 strains that we purchased from NIST uh, in triplicate and submitted each library for singular uh, G4 or LuminaNX Seq 2000 sequencing. And just a brief overview on the library prep, uh, we pooled the 19 strains in equal concentrations. We covariate sheared the pool um, in T buffer. We took 200 nanograms of shear DNA through an in repair process using the Quant, uh, Quantibio SparQ DNA library prep kit. Uh, then ligated five microliters of uh, either singular or Illumina index adapters at 15 uh, micromolar. Uh, and finally did a final bead, up, bead cleanup. Um, if you want the full details of the protocol, please reach out via our uh, website's uh, request form. But in summary, we treated the libraries the same way, except we ligated on um, Illumina or Singular adapters, respectively. Um, so getting back to um, batch delays, uh, since we were since we're doing shallow shotgun here, uh, we only needed a few million reads per sample, uh, so we used only one lane uh, on a G4 flow cell. For the paired uh, Illumina comparator libraries, uh, we sent them to a local core facility um, indexed where they are run on a shared flow cell with other users uh, samples. This required some, some waiting and, and some risk of index hopping with samples uh, from other users' projects. Um, to the problem of GC uh, content, microbial genomes span broad, a broad GC content, and there are many steps in the GS workflow that can bias a wet and dry lab pipeline towards either the higher or low end of the GC spectrum. Here, we utilize 19 strains from NIST microbiome standard, which range between 38 and 68 uh, percent GC content uh, to assess biases in both 
the singular and Illumina platforms. Uh, we chose uh, the NIST strains in particular, uh, not only because they have a broad GC, but also because their product is uh, orthogonally validated uh, using both uh, NGS and uh, Droplet digital PCR. So here on the first data slide, you can see on the y-axis is the log2 full change um, of uh, I'm sorry, it's just the log2 mean abundance of the uh, Nexig data. Uh, on the x-axis is the G4 data. Um, and these are averages over, over the triplicates. And you can see that um, both platforms' um, strains, their abundances, um, uh, highly correlate with one another. Uh, in the second data slide, uh, on the y-axis, you have the observed x-axis expected values. Um, and you can see in different colors are the G4 in the green and Illumina uh, in the black. And you can see that both platforms um, strongly correlate uh, with the expected truth. Uh, and the G4 has a slightly stronger correlation uh, to the truth values. And on the last data slide, you have on the y-axis uh, the log2 uh, full change over the observed and expected values. On the x-axis, you have each genome's uh, percent GC. And what you can see here is that there's very poor correlations. On the right side, you have the G4. On the left side, uh, you have uh, Illumina, uh, which is good. Uh, no platform has a strong uh, GC bias. The, poor, the correlations are poor. Um, and so no strong uh, bias is found in either platform uh, for GC, percent GC. Okay, in closing, uh, overall, we observed accurate and reproducible profiling of low and high GC microorganisms using the G4 platform with results highly correlated uh, to those of a NexSeq 2000. We expect the speed and flexibility uh, and throughput of the G4 sequencing platform will help reduce turnaround times uh, in basic and translational uh, microbiome research. Thank you.